So picking up on part two of our philosophy of nursing and considering nursing philosophy with research, we're going to move to our second topic, which is looking at research paradigms. So why do we need to know about research paradigms? Well, a paradigm is kind of a shorthand that tells us a lot about what someone's assumptions and values and beliefs are as they approach a research topic. So a paradigm is a way of understanding the world around us and a way that we interpret our experiences and make meaning from them. So for the purposes of this material, there are basically three main paradigms in nursing research. That's empirical, interpretive, and critical. They have different names depending on which author you might be reading. And there are you know, different branches of them and things. But what is most important is that we look at these three categories. So we're gonna go through each one in more detail. So the empirical paradigm is sometimes called the positivist or post-positivist positivist <laughs> paradigm. So with this paradigm, the central idea is that there is an objective truth which we can measure and possibly control in order to test hypotheses. So with this paradigm, that means that when people are doing research, they assume that there is a thing out there which they can test. So for example, you would start with a hypothesis such as um, there is poverty in Canada and would go out and look for information that would either support that hypothesis or refute that hypothesis. And so then if you were doing an empirical type of study looking at poverty, you might also say, okay, now we're going to give everyone the same amount of money or we're gonna give everyone a universal basic income and measure outcomes before and after. So it's about objective reasoning and you know, making changes in an environment to isolate the impact of different factors. So usually studies in the empirical paradigm are quantitative methods and they tend to go top down in terms of reasoning. So that means we have a hypothesis like poverty exists and we're going to measure it. And then we use the methods to either confirm or deny that hypothesis. So that is the empirical paradigm. So with empirical paradigm, if you're reading an abstract that is in a study that is based in the empirical paradigm, you're going to expect quantitative measures, you're going to expect testing a hypothesis, and you're going to expect that they're looking for something objective that's kind of external to any one person. So our next paradigm is the interpretive paradigm. Now, when you're doing research from the interpretive paradigm, you're going to say, you know what, there may be an objective truth out there, but what matters is how people actually understand it and feel about it. So poverty may objectively exist in Canada, but one person's experience of poverty is not the same as someone else. So maybe one person experiences poverty, but another person also experiences poverty and racial discrimination. And so that is a different type of thing. So they assume that each person's experience is distinct and unique. And so measuring on a large scale does not actually reflect what might be happening kind of on the ground level. So there are various degrees of the interpretive paradigm. You can have some people who say, you know, everything is subjective and there is no objective truth. My view is that if you get hit by a bus, you get hit by a bus. <laughs> Whether it's, you know, you manifest or believe in that bus or not. Like there are objective, most people would say there are objective things that happen, but how we understand them is individual. So, you know, someone may say, I grew up in poverty and it was really difficult. Someone else may say, you know what, I, we did experience poverty, but I didn't really see it in my family. You know, I, 
I felt like I was kind of the same as everybody else. And, um, and you know, I always had joyous times with my family and I didn't really notice. So it's about understanding those differences person to person and why those differences exist and, and what meaning they have. So you almost always see qualitative methods with the interpretive paradigm. So that's interviews, um, focus groups, observations, speaking with people. You see connecting with individuals rather than things like surveys or um, large scale experiments. You also, in contrast to the empirical paradigm, you're also going to see bottom up reasoning. So rather than having a hypothesis and testing it and saying, you know, the experience of poverty is negative, let's go measure it and see if it was negative. With the interpretive paradigm, you're going to have somebody who would say, we don't know what the experience of poverty is, so let's go speak with people and then from what they tell us, we will come up with a conclusion about whether it's negative or whether it's positive. So our third main paradigm is the critical paradigm. So with this paradigm, what we understand as truth can be deconstructed and changed. So empirical paradigm, there is an objective truth. Interpretive paradigm, there may be an objective truth, but we can look at how each individual person experiences that. With the critical paradigm, we say, who decides what's true? And there might be one version of truth, but what else is going on? Who did not get to contribute to that version of the truth? So the critical paradigm critiques a lot of social systems and construction, and the purpose is very much to create changes. So you get various different methods, often like participatory research or, or something that's focused on like an effort of emancipation or lifting people up. So you see a lot of the critical paradigm in like feminist research, anti-racist research, um, or you know research that advocates with different populations like immigrants or um, other groups. And so, the people who do this type of research say that it's not enough just to study the poor people, we have to try and help them. So they offer alternative explanations and understandings and they challenge our dominant views of how the world works, but they still do so in a very rigorous way. So it's not focused on like conspiracy theories, it's saying, you know, who isn't being heard in these narratives and how can we share their voice? Or how can we use these different examples of the truth and take this forward so that society in general can understand this information from a different perspective? So this is summary is very valuable. This is the key slide when we're looking at paradigms. So we can think of the different paradigms as being contrasted by their purpose, by the research methods they usually use, and then looking at the applied example of poverty here. So it's important as well to recognize that these paradigms aren't right or wrong. There isn't one that is more correct than the others. It more depends on what you're studying. And so, you know, on one level, it is good to measure poverty in Canada and look at like a broad scale. That is important. But then we should also understand what the experience of poverty is like. And ultimately, some people will also want to try and help change it. So whenever you're looking at a paradigm, it's not about is this person right or is this person wrong? It's about what lens have they used and how does that feed into the rest of the study? So if you're doing an appraisal and it seems like someone's coming from the interpretive paradigm, but they did a randomized control trial, well, you're gonna say, you know what, something here just doesn't fit. This doesn't match. And it's, I'm gonna question the validity of this study because they haven't followed through consistently. So if you see a study where the paradigm is at odds with the methods or the purpose, then 
that's a red flag to you to say, I'm not sure in my appraisal if this study really holds up to scrutiny. It also, when you're planning a study, it can help you think through, okay, I want to look at, you know, an anti-racist perspective on something, so I'm probably not going to use a randomized control trial. Instead, I might look at some community-based participation research. So it can help you appraise studies, but also plan your own and sort of say, what area do I want to be in when I'm choosing my methods? If this is how I understand my topic and understand my approach to these issues. So this is kind of a shorthand way of determining what it is that a researcher is thinking and how each piece of their study should connect together. So when you're looking at an abstract, try and think, what paradigm is this author talking about? And you might be able to find that from the methods they use or from if they discuss having a hypothesis or talking about, you know, personal experiences. And then you can look and say, how did this paradigm affect all the different choices they made in their study? And also, what is this research trying to do? Is it trying to confirm what we already know or is it trying to change what we already know or provide a different lens or is it trying to pull apart that structure because it's oppressive? So there's lots of questions that can come from that, but looking at an abstract and trying to say what paradigm is going on here is a really good way to get started when you're doing appraisal or if you're trying to plan to create some research around some issues. And so that's it for this one. Thank you very much.